Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois, along with Jim Baltz, Instructional Design Specialist, and together we are going to present using soybeans as an alternative forage. Our learning objectives include identifying the various stages of soybean growth, identifying key factors in when harvesting soybeans as a silage, hay, or forage resource, and finally evaluating the economics of when to harvest a soybean either as forage or as seed. There are various stages of growth with soybeans. The growth stage we refer to here will be when a field begins to have at least 50% of the plants have reached or have gone beyond a certain stage, and some of these stages may overlap. The two major stages we'll look at include the vegetative stages and the reproductive stages. This simply shows the uh, drawing of the soybean plant, so you can get uh, orientated in terms of when you're looking at your field in terms of the various parts of the plant which we will be referring to a bit here in just a few minutes. You'll hear reference to the R stages, and here they are listed. We want to recognize this tables from the University of Wisconsin and North Carolina State University. R1, beginning bloom, and I'll let you read through the rest of them. You'll notice that the R3 would be the stage probably you have the optimal amount of quality and quantity of forage when you're harvesting the soybean. Remember, these are soybeans that are being raised for seed. This is not the forage soybean, which is a different product in itself. However, with the drought conditions, you may not have much control on that depending on your situation. Another question might be, well, how soon do these plants move through these various stages? Again, realize that this table comes from normal soybeans, not drought-stressed or or soybeans that are limited in moisture. But it gives you a little idea on your harvest window and harvest times. Let's say a quick word then about harvesting soybeans for silage as a forage. Again, repeating, the R3 stage would be the perhaps the optimal place where you're going to find one of the four top nodes with fully developed leaf, structure and probably having 3 16 inch long pod. We would like to wilt this feed down. You'll see a bit later it's very wet uh, to uh, 35 to 45 percent dry matter before ensiling and that level will depend a little bit on your storage unit. Upright silos need to be drier, bags and bunkers and piles perhaps on the wetter end of this range. We would like to chop at 3 8 inch theoretical length of chop. This should give you a distribution of about 40% on the top of the Penn State box, about 40% in the middle of Penn State box, and somewhere around 20% in the bottom box or the bottom two boxes, depending on which unit you're using. As always, we will recommend using an inoculant to stimulate and control the fermentation process on drought stress forages, and we would recommend an inoculant similar to what you would use on a legume or alfalfa type product on your farm. Finally, the yields of this will vary from one to two tons per acre. This data comes from Dr. Don Unsander at the University of Wisconsin, simply showing qualities of soybeans. Now, remember, this is normal soybeans again. And so you can see with the R3 level, we're looking here at almost two ton of dry matter per acre at this point. The protein content approaches 18%, NDF a little bit higher than alfalfa at 43, and ADF sitting at 32%. Again, you can see at the R1 stage, which is less mature, you'll have higher quality feed, but obviously a significant reduction in yield. R5, R7, you begin to see more tonnage coming there, but now the fiber numbers start increasing, and now we're forming the seed itself. And the seed will be providing more of the nutrients than will the forage crop itself. Just simply shows, again, by the Wisconsin researchers, the range of qualities here. Again, uh, this simply shows the range in dry matters of crude protein, ADF, NDF, and NDF digestibility. Perhaps that's the number that catches my eye a little bit lower than expected on some of the other legume crops you may be looking at. The fiber isn't quite as digestible, but big ranges out there certainly driven by the maturity of the crop. And of course, under drought conditions, these numbers can be quite variable. Quick word about soybeans for hay. Again, the stage of maturity is the same, about R3. The real key factor here include one, leaf loss. You really can't rake or move this product because of mechanical handling. You will lose the leaves. And, of course, the leaves are high value. And that's true also when you're harvesting the crop. You can't wait to leaf loss occurring because you're going to lose lots of nutrients because of drought, wind, or other factors out on the farm. Second of all, this product can be quite wet. It may take two or three days to dry down to bale it as hay. 
and of course it's a little uh, more difficult hay to handle according to people because it's not quite as soft and you may have to look at a propionic acid preservative to reduce any mold risk. Cautions of course when looking at soybeans as a forage crop. This is a big one. Make sure you know what herbicides and or insecticides were used on the crop before you harvest the feed. Make sure there are no restrictions in terms of dairy cattle, in terms of meat or milk residues. Second of all, make sure you contact your crop insurance agent before harvesting for forage to be sure that it's allowed on your policy. Perhaps the final question is economics of harvesting soybeans. This is one approach you can look at. We made the assumption that as forages, I would get one and a half tons of dry matter per acre. That could be a high value. And we put a value at $200 per ton for the actual hay itself. So we have a value out there of about $300 per acre harvested. Now, the question is, what if I have seed out there? Well, I back into this calculation. If I assume I had $300 per acre there and soybeans are $15 per bushel, and that price will vary depending on the market, if we have less than 20 bushels per acre, it probably means a forage would be a good alternative, assuming you have livestock to feed the crop too. If you're over 20 bushels per acre, you may decide to combine and take the seed. Be aware I have not put any harvesting charges were included in the soybean seed harvest approach. So in summary, soybeans may be a forage alternative on your farm, especially under drought conditions when you need the forages and those soybeans are not going to make an economical yield on your farm. Certainly economics will be a big factor when we look at these alternatives. Be aware of any residue risks and treatments on that to make sure we have no problems feeding it to livestock. And soybean forage will be similar to other legume forages, but it may not be quite as palatable. Well, that completes our discussion for today. Come and visit us, check out our online dairy courses, and also come to Illinois DairyNet, which contains other valuable information. Thanks. Have a great day.